So let's discuss how to make use of the data on the insights tab. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just real quick before we do that, I'd love to set up where we can find this. I know you've mentioned it a couple times before, but if you're inside of Seller Central, you would go to your menu, you would pop open growth, and you should see the option for product opportunity explore. From my understanding, this is available to people who are brand registered, but it's potentially available to everyone. Um, I have yet to check that because all of our brands are brand registered. And the other thing to your point of of you know niche and categories i think it's really interesting i know we went through this in the first episode but I'll just like give a really brief overview um i'm actually looking at the metrics glossary now which by the way if you're ever trying to dissect a new dashboard and new data go read the metrics glossary and understand amazon's definitions of the different metrics it will get you up to speed so fast. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I found it very, very interesting. Their definition of niche is actually different than their definition of categories. Um, so we know categories are ways for Amazon to understand your product, group products, and put them into you know a certain subsection that would appeal to a set of shoppers. They're actually kind of defining niches backwards. So the way it works with categories is, you know, they kind of take a look at the products. Where does this fit with niches, what they're doing? And I'm looking at, you know, niche details again inside the, the metrics glossary it says niches are a clustering of similar searches or quote keywords and they're top clicked and purchased ASINs to reflect Amazon customer shopping behavior and needs. So what they're actually doing is going and looking, starting with customer searches identifying sort of a grouping of different, in this case, keyword searches that shoppers are doing, looking at the relationships between those shopper searches and their purchase behavior, and then creating a niche or you could say category or grouping around different shopper purchase behaviors, which I think is interesting and wild. So just with that understanding, it gives you a really good idea of, oh, wait, these products are grouped together. These, you know, like you said, we went in the past when we went deep into the search terms. Definitely go recommend checking that one out. Um, but you can kind of start to see how Amazon is thinking and grouping of these things, which means Product Opportunity Explorer is insanely valuable when it comes to understanding shoppers and their purchase and search behavior on the Amazon platform, which I think is like awesome yeah i mean i guess this fits into their idea of best customer experience so mm -hmm. they are ignoring the conventional way because my, my favorite example is always when you walk into a department store you know huge five-story department store they have everything you go to the directory right so you go to the directory and say if you want to buy let's say a, a blender you want to see where the is it home appliances? Is it kitchen? Or you don't know. Sometimes actually you go three floors up uh, yeah. to, into the kitchen and then you find that, oh, it's not there. You ask somebody, you go, you go. So what they've done is they flip that dynamic completely. They simply let people walk into the department store and then uh, group them according to what they want to buy. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, this is like, uh, herds moving, you know, in different directions, it can change over time. Mm -hmm. And is that's how it is. It's now 21st century. So that's the the difference between a, a niche and a category. The category is st static. Mm -hmm. you, it's a way to merchandise, but niche, they are always moving and new ones are being created and they are uh, becoming fragmented and so that's why it's a good idea to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely.